Hi, Mikhailov here from Team Retro, where we like retro games, we like roguelikes, and we like the devices that bring them to us. So here I am today with a device that does retro games and roguelikes very well. It's the Retroid Pocket 2. This is an Android-based single board computer that can not only run... Uh, retro games very well, but it also runs Android games pretty decently. So you can get a couple of roguelikes on this thing. What I primarily like to use it for is Nintendo 64 emulation because of all the devices that I've gotten into since starting this hobby. This is really the only one that's been able to emulate Nintendo 64 fairly well. I can get Nintendo 64 running on devices such as the RG351P, but for games like Kirby 64, on those devices it just does not run very well at all, and you could see right here on the Retroid Pocket 2, we're running near perfect. Now I'm also part of the Retroid subreddit and the Retroid Discord, which are two very good resources for anybody starting out with a device like this. And the reason I've been able to get N64 running pretty well is due to a video that made the rounds on the Retroid subreddit by ET Land. And I'll link to that video in the description. And what ET Land was able to do was showcase a universal profile for the Mupin 64 Plus FZ emulator, which runs on the Retroid Pocket 2. So in this video, I'm going to give a quick tutorial on how to get that profile up and running. And then we're also going to do some gameplay testing and impressions of Mupen 64 FZ running that universal profile. The goal here is to provide a clear and concise guide on how to get the best performance out of this emulator uh, and also to show you if this is actually worth doing if you own one of these devices. So let's get started. So here we are on the home screen. I am running Lineage OS, but this will work with Android 6 or Android 8. So we're going to start just by going right into the Moopin emulator. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hold the home button until we are in gamepad and mouse combined mode. You can also do this in regular mouse mode or touchscreen mode, whatever is appropriate for your situation. Go ahead and click the hamburger menu on the top left. And we're going to go into Profiles, select Emulation, and we're going to go to the Glide N64 Fast Profile. Go ahead and click it, and we're going to click Copy. Now we're going to change the name of the profile. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and just name it Retroid. Go ahead and click next. You can also change the description if you want. I'm just going to leave the description the same. And when we're done here, we can click next again. Go ahead and confirm by clicking OK. Now the emulator is going to take us into this menu. There are two things we need to change. So go ahead and scroll down until you get to these two options. We're going to uncheck Enable Noise Emulation and we're also going to uncheck Enable LOD Emulation. I'm just scrolling down to show you some of the other options available to you, but we don't actually need to touch any of these other settings. We could just go ahead and back out. You'll now see that our new profile is added to the list. So we just have to tweak a couple more settings to get this up and running. So let's go back into settings and let's go to display. And we just want to make sure the rendered resolution is set to 320 by 240. Uh, you could set this higher, 
but you are going to get decreased performance if you do. We also need to go into profiles and select profiles. And we're going to change our emulation profile to the new Retroid profile that we just created. And that's it. So let's get into some gameplay and see how well this does. And here's Kirby 64 one more time. I just want to showcase this game because I really love Kirby 64. And just playing it on this at full speed, portable, is just amazing to me. This game just runs very well under this profile. If you use other plugins like Rice, then Kirby 64 ends up suffering from some really bad graphical issues. And in this situation, we're running very well. We're at full speed. I don't see any graphical issues. There is a frame hiccup here and there, but this is very playable on this device. You could see on the top right corner, the frame rate dips every now and again, but for the most part, we are at a steady frame rate. And I personally am not really noticing any performance issues, even when that frame rate number goes down. Now, I'm playing in handheld mode and not hooked up to the TV, because for some reason with the Retroid Pocket 2, my capture card doesn't agree with it, and I end up with audio lag. So I wanted you to hear that the audio is crisp and is not staggering in any type of way. So I'm going to turn it up, just play a couple seconds of footage, just to show you what we're dealing with here. So here's Paper Mario, and in my experience, this is a harder game to emulate. And it seems to be okay at first, but the frame rate really dips in the cutscene that I'm about to show here. Once we get into gameplay again, the frame rate does seem to go back to normal. There are a couple of dips here and there. It doesn't make the game unplayable, but even with this profile, things are not perfect and you are going to get some frame rate dips here and there with Paper Mario. Here's F-Zero X, another very hard N64 game to emulate, and the FPS counter is actually showing a pretty steady 59 to 60 frames per second, and gameplay seems to be a dream here. It runs fast, the audio sounds great, and this is pretty great to see considering how hard this game is to emulate on a lot of devices, but here on the Retroid Pocket 2 with this universal profile, we're running pretty well. Here's Mario Kart 64. Now for some reason the FPS counter is set to 13 and it doesn't seem to go higher than 13 FPS for whatever reason, 
but the game is by no means unplayable. To me, it seems to be running perfectly fine. If anyone has an explanation as to why the FPS counter isn't going up past 13 on this emulator, please let me know in the comments because it kind of confused me, but for gameplay purposes, I didn't seem to experience any slowdown, the audio sounded fine, and the game was definitely playable. Here's Super Smash Brothers, another hard to emulate game, but I just want to show you on this profile that graphically you can see a lot of the stuff that is for whatever reason not visible on other emulator profiles. So you could see Link's eyes and I'm going to zoom in on Kirby a little bit here just so you could see that his face is perfectly visible with this emulator profile. Whereas when emulating Super Smash Brothers in other ways, his face might be completely gone or Mario's eyes might be completely gone as well. And here we are playing on Yoshi stage with a bunch of different Yoshis. And I'm playing this level specifically because I want to show you that there is little to no frame rate drops when there are a lot of players on the screen. So we've tested a lot of N64 games here running this universal profile. And I think we can safely say yes, it works. That'll do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching, and if this was helpful to you, please like and subscribe. It helps out the channel, and I would like to keep more of these tutorial videos rolling. So until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.